Northwest Women's Care Educational Division in conjunction with Ross University Medical School presents breast disease. Well, this presentation is on breast disorders. Well, one of the primary concerns with uh, most women when, with uh, regard to um, a breast lump or a breast mass of some sort is whether or not it's going to be cancerous. Um, luckily, uh, most uh, breast masses tend to be benign. So um, if we're going to start off with uh, talking about a couple of the most common uh, benign disorders. Uh, one of the most common breast tumors in young women, uh, less than 30 years of age, so adolescents and um, just young women in general, are a fibroadenoma. It's going to be a small, freely mobile, firm mass with smooth edges. Uh, it tends to be rubbery in nature, but uh, the most, com most important thing to take from this is the uh, mobility of it, which indicates that uh, it hasn't invaded the tissue underneath it, hence it's benign. Um, and this is not a precursor of malignancy. Well now, uh, about 10 to 15 percent of these will present as multiple masses. However, uh, you most commonly will find these in the right upper quadrant, uh, outer quadrant of the, of the right breast. And then uh, they range in size from one to five centimeters, when, and though they uh, tend to be kind of small, on the larger side, they will start to distort the shape of the breast and contour of the breast, so it might be noticeable, uh, well clearly will be noticeable on physical exam. However, it might be difficult to distinguish between uh, a cyst or a fibroadenoma, in which case uh, an ultrasound will help that. On, under ultrasound, you actually see a hypo hypoechoic, homogeneous mass, and uh, this would be clearly distinguishable from a cyst. Um, also, in addition to the ultrasound, you do a fine needle aspiration, and these two factors, uh, when taken together, can give a really high uh, degree of certainty in the diagnosis. Now, since uh, a lot of fibroadenomas tend to uh, remit on their own and disappear, most clinicians will actually recommend uh, a rather conservative care since it's benign. However, um, most women, uh, when surveyed, actually prefer an excisional biopsy because uh, this uh, provides a degree of uh, psychological relief. Um, and removal of the mass. Now another uh, kind of a subclass of fibroadenomas or what's kind of uh, a variation is a phylloides tumor which is sometimes referred to as a giant fibroadenoma. Now uh, uh, in the 10% of cases when these actually do become malignant uh, you might see the classification uh, sister sarcoma phylloides. Now uh, these have the highest incidence in 40 to 50 year old women and uh, have characteristics of a large uh, malignant uh, sarcoma. Even, even when it's benign. Now, uh, when sectioned, they actually take on a leaf-like appearance, hence the name uh, phylloides. Uh, comes from the Greek word uh, phylo, or phylo, which means leaf. And even though these are benign, generally, uh, they can actually grow uh, fairly aggressively uh, in a local area. So uh, uh, sizes up to 30 centimeters have been reported. Another uh, benign disorder is an intraductal papilloma. These are one of the most common uh, uh, most common uh, cause of bloody nipple discharge. And um, these actually, are the, the discharge is generally correlated to some degree with menses. And the tumor is believed to be a tumor of the lactiferous ducts, uh, especially the, uh, the area around the nipple and the subareolar tissue. Uh, these also have the highest incidence in women in their 40s, uh, much like the phylloides tumor. And then uh, we're going to talk about some uh, malignant tumors now. All right, malignant tumors. Malignant tumors usually affect women in their postmenopausal uh, age. Now, factors that affect the prognosis are four: uh, receptor status, lymph node status, uh, tumor size, and DNA ploidy status. Off of these, only two are main important. Uh, receptor status. Uh, we, whenever we talk about receptor status, we talk about two different or three different types. One is estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and EGF receptors, which can consist of subcategorized as um, HERB2, HER2 new, or HERB2 receptors. Uh, these recept receptors basically are targets of monoclonal antibodies that are used to uh, block these receptors, and it's basically prognostic in the treatment. Now, another thing that's very prognostic is the axillary lymph node status. If there, uh, it basically correlates indirectly with the uh, survival rate of the patient. Uh, now, if the axillary lymph nodes numbers are high, the survival rate is low. Now, we're going to talk about um, different types of malignant tumors, and they're basically broadly categorized in two: non-invasive and invasive. Non-invasive are Non-invasives are DCIS and LCIS. DCIS is a ductal carcinoma in situ, which is the most common one. 
And uh, what they're called in situ is because they do not penetrate the basement membrane. That means they're localized in a particular area and they do not penetrate or go to different structures. Second one is lobular carcinoma in situ, which is second most common. And it's basically uh, very vague to diagnose. It's bilaterally found and it's also, uh, there's, no there's no prognosis, there's no diagnosis that's really definitive for this. Now we're gonna talk about malignant tumors more. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about four types of um, <clears throat> invasive breast cancer, and these are called invasive because they infiltrate the breast stromal tissue. The first kind is the most common and aggressive, and that is um, invasive ductal carcinoma. And what you're gonna feel on palpation is a firm, hard, gritty, immobile mass with an irregular shape. Um, it, upon gross examination of the tumor, you're gonna see gray or, right, or white tissue, and that's due to the fibrosis. Um, also, um, histology, you're going to see nests of malignant cells, and the more malignant cells that you see in comparison with glandular cells, the worse the tumor is. The second kind of invasive tumor is invasive lobular carcinoma, and just like the lobular carcinoma in situ, it's found bilaterally and it's multifocal. You can't really palpate it and you can't see it grossly, but microscopically you'll classify it because you will see single file cells, small cells. Um, the next kind I'm going to talk about is medullary carcinoma. This has a better prognosis. Grossly, you're going to feel a soft tumor, and when you examine it, it's going to be tan or brown. This is because this tumor involves necrosis, hemorrhage, and lymphocytic infiltration. Um, and histologically, you're going to see a syncytial pattern. The last one I'm going to talk about that's invasive is comedo carcinoma. It's actually the same thing as ductal carcinoma in situ, but it tends to invade. So inside of this tumor, you're going to look inside the duct and you're going to see necrotic cells mixed with calcifications. And if you squeeze the duct, you will produce linear casts.